there's anyone who's qualified on the internet to waste a copious amount of cash on a potential scam in the games industry, it's me. Welcome back to Retro Rebound, ladies and gentlemen. For those who don't know me, I do many things here, but one of the series we run is called the GameStop Roulette. And it's there I buy a bunch of old games and we laugh about, well, the quality that some of the games come in. It's hilarious. This video is brought to you by Marlo. Hey, are you like me and you had neck problems for a while because of your pillow? Marlo is literally your answer. So this pillow allows you to adjust your firmness depending on how you like to sleep at night thanks to a little zipper attached to the side of the pillow. Now, this is awesome because if you wanna have a firm pillow like me, you'll zip that bad boy up tight. But if you wanna have complete plushness, you can unzip both sides. Here's a live example of me using the Marlow pillow. And just like that, thanks to Marlow with its cooling infused foam, I get my best naps here at the office. Good night. I say good night. I kid you not, I, I know this is an ad, but my neck problems went away with this pillow. I was having so many issues for weeks. I could not get the kink out of my neck. I started using this before the ad was gonna be recorded and it fixed it. So click the link down below to get yourself a Marlow pillow and change the way you sleep like I did. If you're still on the fence, Marlow is offering a special deal between March 9th and March 20th, where they're offering up to 30% off plus an additional 20% when you shop using my link. So if you want a good pillow, click the link down below and shop with Marlow. So I've been seeing on the internet, cause it's always in my recommended feed, a lot of trash talk about DK oldies. I remember when I got back into restoring my video game collection around 2018, 2019, I came across their website and I laughed at the prices and kind of just moved on. But some content creators have taken the dive and have seen some fascinating results on the systems they've bought. So as someone who's a professional at wasting their cash here on this channel, I thought I'd spend $300 on DK oldies and see if I get scammed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we have in here is a Game Boy Advance and a Nintendo GameCube. Both my orders were cosmetically flawed. I wanted to see just how bad it is, because part of me, I'm like, how are y'all getting that bad a system so consistently? So right here, we have the package from DK Oldies. You'll notice the cameras pulled out a lot more than our usual Retro Rebound videos, because uh, this box is taller than it looks. So let's get to snipping it open and <laughs> see what they sent us. I, again, this is a, a video born sheerly out of morbid curiosity. And I see a lot of y'all enjoying those videos. Shout out to Review Tech USA. I've always liked this channel. I, I think he's the one who's really put this stuff on the map. And since then, a lot of YouTubers have been checking out what DK Oldies is up to. And so I just wanted to get in on the fun. But shout out to Rich. He does great work on his channel. And uh, I'm following in his footsteps here. So let's let's see what DK Oldies has for us. All right. We got thingies. Okay, let's... Uh, feel them out all right nice and protected and now all over my office floor okay let's see all right just so you you see your boy's not lying here this is my order i got an av to hdmi converter because i was curious about that i got the indigo player pack for the gamecube and i got a Game Boy advance sp as i said cosmetically flawed here so we're gonna see just how bad and i have the the best chance of really anyone out there to get something pretty bad because they, they don't know who I am, at least until now. Oh, here we go. This is, uh, I think, new. Thank you for your purchase of an acceptable or cosmetically flawed product. You may be wondering what the difference is between good condition and acceptable slash cosmetically flawed. Good condition products are in good used conditions. All games and consoles that are offered are upwards of 45 years old. Therefore, new condition could not be expected. When classifying a good used condition game, we take into consideration the labels and the cartridge condition. Minor cosmetic flaws like scratches, discoloration, chips are common due to the age and nature of the product. Therefore, acceptable and cosmetically far products may have chips, scratches, discoloration, sticker marker, an inoperable reset buttons or other issues. They are cleaned, tested, and guaranteed to work. That's been the big talking point here. None of these consoles have apparently been clean from what these YouTubers are saying, just like our good condition products. However, because of their flaws, they are offered at a discounted price, but still backed by our one year free warranty that is void if you decide to open up the console it says they are a great option for those who aren't collectors and just want to play their favorite games and systems so we'll see if it's even playable because that's the the real thing i'm curious about here so let's continue to just dump the protection out and see what we got here in the mix so first things first i see at the top here 
I see our Game Boy Advance SP. Now, as you saw on my receipt, it was cosmetically flawed. So I'm expecting something pretty dinged up here. I have right next to me here my other, my actual working Game Boy Advance SP. We have a bunch of games here. We're gonna test them out on, then we'll test them out in comparison to my personal one and just see how it all goes. So let's get to unwrapping here. This one seems to be pretty all right. Let's, let's look here. Uh, scratches on the top, pretty marked up. Dinged here for sure, or that's man juice. I can't really tell. Uh, we have the DK Oldies warranty sticker, so if I dare to open this, uh, yeah, this is wow, it's got some nasty markings on it, but that's in fairness what I paid for here. Uh, I'm scared to open this up because that's where I think the real damage is going to be, and oh, surprisingly, not. Uh, it's a little discolored here. Uh, this I paid a lot of money for, so we'll talk about the prices separately. Uh, but even for cosmetically flawed, this is a, a, a pretty big overpay. Uh, the the triggers aren't, you can kind of hear it, they're not really clicky compared to like here where they're softer. I don't know if the mic's going to pick it up, but here, uh, very interesting. Let's just see if it even turns on. It does turn on, okay. That's a good sign, at least. <laughs> it's uh, it's on low battery, though, right away. So we'll test out that with the games. But what I'm really curious about, I, I had a good feeling about the, the Game Boy Advance. I'm like, that is a pretty sturdy handheld. That's really hard to mess up. I'm very curious about the condition of this GameCube and if it works. I wanted to get one cartridge-based product and one disc-based product. Uh, so let's just get to emptying this all out here. We got... All the wires here. This is actually an official Nintendo product. Okay, that's good to see. I saw some people getting some third-party stuff. Uh, I'm very excited to see the... Con oh, there's the controller and... Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, that's gonna be an interesting one. I can already tell. Okay, we got the power pack here. This is also official Nintendo product. What else do we got in here? All right, looks like this is our GameCube. I probably should, oh God, I think I can see right through the top here. It looks really discolored, but that, that could just be the bubble wrap, we'll see. And then we got uh, HDMI, just a standard HDMI for the old school AV to HD converter. I've actually used the old school product before, and so in fairness, this isn't really a bad one to get. I have right here my uh, friends at Eon had actually stopped me at the Long Island Gaming Expo, and so they gave me uh, this one specifically for the GameCube, which can actually upscale your imagery compared to this one, which just makes it work. So we'll also test that out, but I wanted to see what they sent with us in the terms of third party. That was an extra 25 bucks though, and otherwise uh, the box is empty. So that's what we got. Let's take a look at the controller first and foremost. We have here from my actual collection a uh, a wave bird, as you'll see here, I just gotta refocus things. You'll see here, we got the nice wave bird. We can, we can zoom in now that the, the box is out of the way. Uh, so this is a nice high quality controller, definitely the one that's most sought after because of its wireless capabilities. Meanwhile, let's see what DK Oldies sent us for a controller. Mind you, uh, this GameCube was like 170 something bucks and uh, it's an old school one. It's not, yeah, the thumbsticks are a little tight uh, but it is pretty clean, pretty responsive. I do have a second third-party controller at home. So again, I don't have really much of an issue with old school. So things are pretty responsive here compared to... Yeah, this has gotten some use. So overall, not bad. Not bad, actually. So that that's, to me... Cool, like, good. This, this is what we want to see, improvement, for, based off what others have, have purchased in the last month. Uh, this is a step forward. I'm very curious about the console, though, because that can turn this whole video south. So let's move some stuff to the side here. All right. Let's see here. Oh, this is in really rough shape, man. <laughs> this, oh my god, the top of this is a completely different color. Okay, I'm actually happy that I purchased this one because the top is totally different compared to another Indigo GameCube. Okay, side by side. My GameCube, DK Oldies. Mine's gonna be a little taller. I have the Game Boy Player on the bottom, but there's two ways to see just how discolored this is. First and foremost, we're gonna pop open the disc tray for each, and you'll see 
a hint of the indigo here and you'll actually see the indigo here as well what it's the color is supposed to be and you can actually see now alongside here just how discolored and faded it is i'm imagining this console was sitting in the sun for some time but this is a completely different color now and it's actually not just the top but if you look at the front part here the discoloration is insane man this is completely yellowed over meanwhile this is perfectly fine and white you know the the thing here that i find interesting is i paid 170 for that crummy game boy advance i paid 130 for this here and it's interesting because this is considered acceptable but the game boy advance was considered cosmetically flawed and both are equally awful in my eyes and both i paid a premium for now the more important thing of course is going to be does the game system run and we'll test that shortly but of course i gotta take a look at the, the inside here of like the slots and see if they even took a q-tip to this thing and right now it looks clean but just based off what's here like you can even see smudges all over if i kind of hit the lighting right you can see they didn't even take like a wet washcloth to this quite frankly uh, the fan, though, on the inside looks all right. That's good. The the back ports from my eye look pretty clean. I should make it clear I'm not a tech guru, so that's why I'm hoping I don't have to break these things open because I'm not trying to, to, to shoot above my pay grade, if you will, here. Uh, and then, yeah, this side also, we don't see any real dust caught in any of the vents, which is a good sign. And uh, a better sign is that this actually opens just fine. It's not super clicky, but the, the real test is going to be how does it run games if it looks like it's been baking in the sun for years and it's smudged up so this to me doesn't scream refurbished and uh, i was wondering where the sticker was here it is um i'm curious also the the ports here on the bottom this is how you hook up the the game boy player um and overall those look okay as well so it's, it's really just coming down to uh the nastiness of the price and if these work and if they work uh i'll have some thoughts and we also have the high speed port here and uh, this looks fine too so uh let's go ahead and, and hook these up now and, and test both the game boy advance and the gamecube and see uh, just how bad things get all right now we're going to try out the game boy advance what we have here is this is the dk oldies one this is mine we are maybe not even going to need this one if the dk oldies version actually works uh, I recognize something though when I was getting ready to set up and record this is if you look very closely, let's get the focus on it just right. It's probably hard to see, but I'll just point out that inside both ports here, as well as the cartridge slot, there is some dirt, some leftover gunk that all you needed to do was take a Q-tip to. It's gonna be hard for the camera to pick up, especially since the console and the ports are so small. All they had to do here was take a Q-tip to this. I've done it before with my own Game Boy Advance SP and it's as good as new. And they didn't even do that. So keep in mind, even if I'm paying for cosmetically flawed, they claimed on that piece of paper, it's refurbished, it's clean, it's tested. And this was definitely not clean. This was pulled out of a box, no doubt about it. But I guess if it works, people won't care. It's just that you could probably get something better for way cheaper elsewhere. Uh, some folks will say, well, that's your own fault for not knowing, but I, I think DK Oldies has some accountability, no doubt. Like they charge extremely high prices for very low value goods, quite frankly. So let's see if this even works. Uh, what we're pulling from here in my personal collection is Dragon Ball Z, Boo's Fury, absolutely fantastic action RPG. We also have Mega Man Battle Network. I picked both these games specifically because I've played them here on the channel. You've seen them running here on the channel before DK Oldies was even a thing. So you know they work on my hardware before any of this. I also showed it off on the analog pocket. So it's important to distinguish these are games I've played in the past. They already work. So if they don't work on this system, it is the system not the games which are from my collection and in mint condition. So let's get started here. Let's crack this bad boy open and we're gonna begin with Boo's Fury. So let's go ahead, throw that into the cartridge slot. All right, here we go, let's see. And uh, just based off the fact that we're seeing this here, the Nintendo logo, is always a good sign that the game runs. Uh, we're just gonna make sure it fires up and can actually load my save, but Right now, music is playing, it's jamming. I'm gonna turn down a little bit in case the mic picks it up, but uh, fire game, by the way, just wanna throw it out there, but there we have it, Booze Fury. 
And it looks like with single player, there's my save and it loads no problem. Look at that. Look at that, Booze Fury running fine on the DK Oldies Game Boy Advance. Backlight screen leaves a lot to be desired, so I gotta play it on this angle so the lighting doesn't kill y'all. Uh, but that looks good. So let's go ahead and break out our other test, which is going to be uh, Battle Network. You may be wondering what this Game Boy Color game is. We're also gonna give Pokemon Gold a shot just to make sure, because this one was laying around in my drawer. So I figured, well, if we have any type of game that we wanna see does or doesn't work, we may as well use an old one too. So let's put this one in and see what happens and boom there we go okay so we're actually looking pretty good on the game boy advance uh it looks like they're delivering right now and at least it's working we can lo load my new game plus save here and uh the game is working just fine which is what you want to see if you pay as much as i had to for this stuff but uh okay excellent so that's two games down two for two we may not even have to break out my own uh because as we'll see here it's loading up pretty instantaneously. And uh, look at that. Game Boy Color works as well. Uh, it should, but given that there was dirt in the cartridge slot, I guess it was worth making sure, but I haven't even had to do like a little blowing into the cartridge to, to make sure things work. Um, but yeah, we can see here, all good to go. I mean, this is uh, definitely a little bit of a surprising twist if you've watched a lot of DK Oldies content like I have, but uh, yeah, Game Boy Advance, doesn't look great, uh, but it works just fine. And just for clarity's sake, I tested the charger here that they provided me, and you'll see it is, in fact, charging the Game Boy Advance SP. So everything with this package, while it doesn't look great, does work. All right, we're all set up right now. We got the DK Oldies GameCube hooked up. Our first test is going to be Pokemon Coliseum. Again, we're gonna have the same energy here that we're gonna have with the Game Boy Advance test, which is these are all games I've played on my channel, tested before, they've worked on my personal GameCube. You can verify it with older videos and we're gonna see if it works on their system. So let's crack this open and we're gonna pop open the top here. I'm gonna put the disc in and uh, let's see if the system even starts up. I haven't tried that yet. So here, here we go. All right, it, uh, it's it's playing. So there we go, there's that. Let's see. The sound of the, oh no, <laughs> no way. Oh my God. Wow, it's not a lie. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Wow, it actually doesn't work. Get out of here. Okay, hold on. I got to show you all the bottom of the disc so you know this is a mint condition copy. Okay, let's real time here. No lies, real time here. Let's pull this out. You can see for yourself. Does this look like a game that shouldn't run? It's not absolutely spotless, but this should run. Okay, so... That's test number one for the old DK Oldies machine. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it didn't work. Okay, we're gonna try our next game now and see if we can even get past it. Next game is gonna be Luigi's Mansion. Uh, we just played this in October. I did my full playthrough for the video on my GameCube. This has to work. There's just no doubt in my mind about this because that worked totally fine for me before all this. So here we go, game number two goes to Luigi's Mansion. Let's actually show the condition of the disc first here. So as you'll see on the bottom, this one, it has a couple of minor scratches for sure. Uh, but again, I just did a full playthrough with this. So it proved no issue for me and my personal collection. So let's go ahead, let's snap it in. Let's get it all hooked up for the presentation here and uh, turn it on once more. And let's see what happens. Here we go. Let's see if, let's see if Maddie can play a video game here. All right. Will it read the disc? And, oh, I think we got something. Hold on. It's taking a while. I hear it spinning. Okay, interesting. Okay, so, huh. All right, that's gonna be an interesting test when we hook up the other GameCube because Luigi's Mansion does work. And you'll see my file here. I believe this is from my new game plus. Yeah, okay. It, Let's see, it looks like it's working. 
And uh, also I have the HDMI converter hooked up here that they gave me. You'll see that in the backdrop, all those wires hanging. Uh, but yeah, Luigi's Mansion does work on the DK Oldies console. Okay, so we'll see if that's an L for Pokemon Coliseum or an L uh, for, for me in a moment. But let's try now game number three, which is gonna be Sonic Adventure Director's Cut. We just did a huge Sonic retrospective that was almost an hour long. We did a dedicated Sonic Adventure DX video as well, the week that Sonic Frontiers came out. This is another one I feel pretty confident has to work, uh, but we'll see if, if it can read the disc. Now keep in mind, it took a while for it to read Luigi's Mansion. Uh, that did not happen with my original GameCube, so there's still something slow here with the system, but game number three, let's see, third time's the charm for DK Oldies. And pop this sucker in, and here we go. Let's see if it uh, let's see if it works here. Will it read the disc? That's the question, indeed. Let's see if it does the spinning sound. Oh, that one was instantaneous. That one was instantaneous, and I think we're good to go. Okay, so what's up with Pokemon Coliseum? I'm gonna try that one more time on the DK Oldies machine, but it looks like Sonic Adventure is working and the console doesn't sound like it's working too hard, which is good. Here, here a couple like flicks when it's spinning the disc. Oh yeah, I love this game so much. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're, we're looking good, I think. I'm just, I'm, I don't know, like I'm getting trust issues here. <laughs> After the first one didn't work, I'm like, huh? how do the next two work? All right, we are playing and uh, fighting chaos right now, and we're looking, looking okay as it stands. Yeah, everything's working. The controller, by the way, feels fine. For, for a third-party controller, I, I think you could do much worse in my experience. Uh, old school, to me, isn't that bad, but yeah, we're, we're working fine. We went through a bunch of cutscenes before this, so right now it's two for three, but we're gonna break out my GameCube now, and we're gonna see if Pokemon Coliseum, there's just something wrong with the disc. That'd be super disappointing. That's an extremely expensive video game, uh, which I did test before and it worked no problem. So we're about to find out who's the problem here. Is it Pokemon Coliseum? Is it DK Oldies? Or is it me? Is there something wrong with me? Well, let's go find out and hook it up. Now that everything worked though, like I said, I, I wanna do one more test for Pokemon Coliseum. I'm gonna look at the bottom here just this thing is spotless. So maybe it was just getting some of the dust off here, but let's try just one last time here to see if it is the GameCube or not, but then we'll bring in mine. I'm just curious if it doesn't read it again, because that would be... Okay. Okay, it read it this time. So we might have like a spotty winner here. This is this is one of the weirdest testings I've ever gone through for, for an old system, but yeah, it, it looks like Pokemon Coliseum works now, so I don't know if there's much reason for me to test out my personal setup if all three games work now. It's just to, to mixed results, if you will. Uh, but yeah, here we are. Hit the main menu. There's no file. Makes sense. And, uh... Yeah, look at that. You can just do a battle real quick. All right, I mean, here we are in a fight and uh, everything is working fine. I can just speak from my personal perspective. I know it might look a little different on your end, but this HDMI converter is, a is actually quite good. It's, it's definitely on par with what um, uh, e Eon's offering, which is a good sign because Eon, I, I like them, but they're very pricey. Uh, but this is a really easy setup. You do need to have a USB slot for your TV to power it. Uh, but if you do have that, then you can play your current games on uh, your GameCube. The one thing I will throw out there is that this doesn't come with a memory card, which I find really weird for the player pack, but uh, yeah, especially the price you're paying, really strange. But yeah, it looks like Coliseum works. So, all right, we're just gonna try out Pokemon Coliseum real quick, just to see, of course I gotta take out the Game Boy Player disc, uh, just to see what's going on here with my personal GameCube and just to make sure like sound wise, performance wise, that I'm not missing anything at all, just for being thorough's sake. So let's turn this on and let's see how everything runs on my personal hardware. Imagine it doesn't work. <laughs> just like the one time it doesn't work here. 
Uh, but overall, it starts up right away, no problems. Okay, so the only difference I'm personally noticing here, and I'm glad I did test it because I was about to skip it because I thought, well, it works, so let's, why not? I'm glad I tested it because the fans on the DK Oldie system are way louder. Way, way louder is something I've recognized here. Fortunately, the game works. <laughs> That'd be a horrible sign if it didn't. Uh, but it looks like something's kind of off with the DK Oldie system. It's a little bit louder. It doesn't look nearly as clean. It's super discolored. Some games load a little strangely. And of course, we had that near miss with the, the Pokemon Coliseum copy. But right now, looks like my stuff is totally fine, which is great. As expected, I use this frequently for Retro Rebound, so I expected nothing less. Uh, but just wanted to make sure I tested it. I'm glad I did because the... The sound is the biggest difference, no doubt about it. Tremendous sound difference, way quieter here on mine. It was it distractingly loud for DK Oldies, no, but definitely a significant difference that you should be aware of if you're gonna pay a premium price for that. All right, so we tested it all. Let's head back to the table and uh, discuss now in a final verdict as my mic slides out of place. Okay, so that's all the testing. Uh, the verdict, right, $300 for a very discolored GameCube. You could tell the sun was coming in on this side here because this is the side in particular that was faded. The top, of course, is faded. But meanwhile, uh, this side isn't as bad. Um, but this was considered acceptable and it cost me 130 ish dollars. Meanwhile, we have this very damaged Game Boy Advance, which I did know going into it, it was labeled as cosmetically flawed. Uh, this was a hundred and seventy dollars. That's a lot of money for two systems, and especially with the GameCube, to some mixed results, and that was considered the acceptable one that I paid more for. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let it be known I have no issue if a retro games outlet wants to be the carrier of premium goods. Like, when you buy a game from them, you know it's gonna be a beautiful, complete in box copy, or you know you're not gonna have any issues with the hardware, that there's been a higher level of effort. But to me, when this is considered acceptable, there's a problem with the prices they already have that's a problem like i was already gonna go in on the prices whether or not these systems work because what they charge even if they were in actual solid condition is ridiculous especially when you're getting with add-ons like the hdmi adapter i got which is great was an additional 25 dollars that's insane especially when it doesn't come with a memory card there's just so many leaps in logic as to justifying their prices. And you think if you're paying a premium, I see their shorts all the time and they're like, oh, we're throwing this game for you. Thanks for shopping with us. Not, not me. I spent 300 bucks and I got nothing. Like if I'm going to pay a premium and you guys are getting that much cash out of me, there should be something tossed in there. But in the terms of the hardware here, I'm not going to act like a tech guru, but yeah, something was up with the GameCube. It was louder. It's discolored. It didn't load a game the first time around. It did afterwards, but it was still skippy at times, particularly with loading Luigi's Mansion. To me, I didn't get my money's worth. And especially when you're charging 170 bucks for a Game Boy Advance SP, do not do that ever. You can get these for dirt cheap. In fact, I've done it before. And again, I'm not a tech guru. I've bought Game Boy Advances I've shown you. I've cracked open the motherboard. I've put it in a different shell. It takes about an hour of your time and it's like half the price of what this is. And it looks way better and you get a better screen out of it if you want to install a new one there. And those go for now if you wanted to sell it afterwards, 200. So you could just flip them easily. Uh, just the fact that this is what they sell. And if they wanted to charge that much, like for $30 more, I could have got a new backlit screen, LCD, none of these damages, none of these scratches with like a custom shell that wasn't sold before. I imagine I'm preaching to the choir. Most of you already knew this place is a scam. It clearly is taken from someone who's been scammed by GameStop many a times. I know one when I see one. And yeah, this is just too fishy for me. Uh, so we'll see if we circle back around. It of course depends on the reception to this video, how it does, because uh, it's, it's really expensive to do a so I tried this from GameStop style approach because at least with GameStop, I get a lot of games. With this, like a GameStop haul video is maybe a console or two 
from DK Oldie. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you thought of this video. Definitely one of our bigger projects here on the channel. So I appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in. And with that, take great care of yourselves and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.